to this story now. And after a crippling wildcat strike at the Patco bus company earlier this month, 53 more workers have today been suspended. Now in total, I think it's 139 Patco employees facing disciplinary action over alleged misconduct. Three provinces and I think about 150,000 commuters left in the lurch when workers defied their own unions and went on an illegal strike for bonus back pay, among other issues. Well, I'm joined now by Patco sp spokesperson Linda kuchlek -Rulu. Linda, thanks so much for joining us. So talk to us about the charges uh, that these 139 people are facing exactly. Well, Sel, I think we must contextualize that uh, out of the 105 workers that were dismissed during the illegal strike, we have uh, been able to go back and review our uh, evidence against these workers, and we've been able to actually reinstate about uh, 18 of these workers. So about 86 had remained, but further in terms of the review of this evidence, we were able then to identify 53 more of these workers that were identified to have been, you know, conducting misconduct during the illegal strike. So all in all, you are right in saying we are looking at about 139 workers that will then be suspended. That's the important part. We are taking them back from dismissal to suspension because we want to allow for the Section 188 process to unfold. We have approached the South African uh, Road Passenger Bargaining Council as well as the CCMA to facilitate these appeals, but essentially we are saying that we are trying to allow for workers to have another chance and have another go at uh, actually uh, uh, you know, uh, trying to, to, mm -hmm. to, to tell us why is it that they, not, they should not be employ employed by PADCO, why is it that they should not be dismissed. So that is exactly the process sure. that we are trying to undertake at this stage. Do they all face the same misconduct charge for being involved in this wildcat strike? Not at all. I remember that already on the, the issue of being involved in the illegal strike was one thing, but uh, it, it was uh, uh, something that was done by over a thousand workers. But what we have done was to look at the evidence against those that had been conducting misconduct. And in a sense that you'd find that there were people that were intimidating others, some, someone saying that um, I know where you live, I know where your family lives, and you should not be working uh, during a strike. Uh, some people would be going into our offices physically removing some of the workers. So we've looked at all of that evidence and it's that kind of evidence that we have against the 139 but uh, the ones that were on strike about a thousand or so uh, did also get final warnings in terms of their conduct and participating in this illegal strike but we looked at particular evidence of showing gross misconduct as far as the 131 workers is concerned so that is what they'll be, they'll be, they'll, they'll be given an opportunity to answer for when it comes to this uh, section 188 process which we're trying to unfold now but we're trying to make it neutral we're trying to make it uh, fair for for them and for ourselves and that is why we are saying that we are approaching the bargaining council as well as the CCMA uh, to give us commissioners at least to facilitate this process so that we are mm. able then to reach a final decision. I mean it's a difficult one because uh, you know it's always awful to have to fire someone uh, no matter what the circumstances mm. um, but at the same time uh, it weakens not only Patco as a company but also I would imagine the strength of the unions mm. uh, if a wildcat strike uh, or someone is allowed to illegally go on strike because all the agreements essentially are flouted, am I right? It's definitely one to, to consider in terms of the effects of an illegal strike. We ourselves have not shied away from saying that we'll carry out this uh, uh, consequence management process. But at the same time, for unions, it's something to consider when workers uh, do, not have, do not trust them enough to heed their call in terms of saying they must not participate in the strike. But in terms of ours, looking at the fact that some might perceive this as an act of a backing down from the dismissals that we've initially implemented, we have to say that uh, after the uh, strike, we were we met with the MEC of Transport in Gauteng, Honorable Jacob Mamabulo. He was, in fact, uh, calling and appealing to us to say that we must find ways to mitigate against mm. the job losses. And that is why we've taken, you know, some of the workers back to say they are under suspension, but we're allowing the process to unfold because at the end of the day, each and every company has to have consequence management and has to have discipline in our company in order to ensure that such scenes of leaving about 150,000 commuters uh, do not repeat themselves in such a manner. Have all the issues been dealt with because there was that issue of the the bonus uh, um, that that seemed to be a real sticking point have all the issues been dealt with are 
Is the workforce, is the morale good now? The issues have been dealt with. Workers initially demanded 6%. They demanded as well a bonus from 2020, uh, but they also demanded a back pay of this 6%. Through the facilitated CCMA process, which is Section 150, we've been able, to, with, together with their unions, to find common ground. And that is why the strike ended, I think, on the 13th of September. But uh, one of the issues then that remains is the issue of consequence management, which is something that sure. we are currently undertaking through uh, us approaching the South African uh, role, role Passenger Bargaining Council as well as the CCMA. But what we want to do is to also just emphasize that this process is also a response to the MEC's call to say that these people have dependents and that is why we are bringing them back. But at the same time, it's a matter of ensuring that they are given an equal opportunity to represent themselves during this process. But at the end of the day, Sally, it's as, as you said, consequence management has to be in place for us to actually be mm. able to operate as a bus company because if there is that, not that, then we won't be able to actually uh, promise the, some of yeah. the commuters the service that we were mandated so, so to So trying give to send that strong mm. warning, but at the same time mindful of how difficult times are for many people. Mm. Um, talk to me about uh, the finances of Patco. I, I would imagine uh, that as a bus company offering a better fare than your private taxis, it's, it's doing really well, particularly as we know uh, the state that the passenger rail agencies are in. Um, is the balance sheet looking healthy? It's not looking healthy. That Why is not? one. That is one of the things, Sally, that uh, you know we as a company had outright said in terms of us even applying for an exemption in 2020. We did say that it, it is because of financial challenges. There are issues, Sally, in terms of across board. First of all, our bus um, uh, our bus um, replacement program was 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 halted and was disturbed in uh, 2020 and during COVID-19. So that is something we needed to actively do in order to be able to cater for our services because you'd remember there are concerns about the safety of the buses, how old they are, the ailing infrastructure that we have. So that program now has been revived. That needs money. The issue of subsidies in terms of, you know, the, the, the formula in which these subsidies would, would, would be given to us in a sense that you look at how petrol has increased in the, in the whole year and uh, when you look at the fact that we haven't been able to increase uh, it related to, to petrol it, uh, or to diesel or fuel, it just goes to show that there are these, um, you know, escalating price uh, issues of, 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 of uh, um, uh, the, I would say, you know, expenses. But yeah. unfortunately, there is nothing that helps us in terms of mitigating against that. And that is some of, those are some of the things that really... You don't really get a, a government subsidy? We do get government subsidies. But like I said, issues of the what subsidy we get because you remember that they give us they are the ones that uh, are sort of uh, the bargaining council would then come and say that this is how much you can increase for a year but looking at this year alone when fuel had increased we don't have mitigating is uh, you know factors to actually help us in that sense and you look at the fact that we tried to have a fuel related increase the passengers themselves that we couldn't we can't they afford can't that afford it and we well. had then to absorb that mm. so we absorb a lot of uh, you know uh, escalations as far as ex uh, expenses are concerned but like I said, it's a matter of making sure that uh, we and, uh, and government, as well as our passengers, understand each other and find the ground in terms of how we All move right. forward. So, well, well it's, it's good. Patco bus, buses are back on mm. the road. 139 Patco employees. Uh, some of them, of course, were dismissed, but after the intervention of the MEC for transport in Gauteng, uh, the company decided on a bit of a compromise. They're now facing um, misconduct charges. Some of them may be able to hang on to their jobs. Um, so we'll see. And that process is being expedited. Thank you so much, Pat Coast. Spokesperson Linda Kutlik-Gulu.